Hey everyone, I'm Dusky Grouse, and this video is a breakdown of the best and worst bonus bird cards in Wingspan North America. When you play a bonus card like this Spotted Owl, you get to draw two new bonus cards and keep one of them. This is a great way to rack up massive points throughout the game if you're lucky enough to draw a bonus card that matches your ongoing strategy and bird layout. Like, this would be a pretty great draw if I already had four ground nest birds on my mat. But sometimes you're not so lucky and you get zero points from your new bonus card. Because of the risk of drawing bonus cards worth zero points, it's important to consider the other benefits of playing that bonus bird card. Like how many points you gain when you play it, or how many eggs it can hold. So I developed a method to quantify the benefits of each of the bonus bird cards so we can know once and for all which bonus bird card is best and which is worst. There are 15 bonus card birds in the North America base game. They are pictured here in order of their point value. I'm going to compare these 15 birds across six different variables and mark them based on if the bird is beneficial to the player or not. The highest point value birds are the Roseate Spoonbill, the Wood Stork, the Whooping Crane, and the Atlantic Puffin. These are great round four plays because of their high point value and your ability to gain more food and pay for them later in the game. I will mark these birds with the white greater than equal symbol to denote this benefit. Conversely, the California Condor and the Sprague's Pipit have the two lowest point values with one and three. So I will mark them with the red less than or equal symbol to denote that they have this one drawback. Sometimes you're not swimming in food resources. So which bird will give you the greatest bang for buck? Below each card is the number of points you gain for each food spent. The Atlantic Puffin and Spotted Owl are the best overall value in addition to the California Condor, which is free. They are marked with a white dollar sign. The Sprague's Pippet and King Rail have the lowest overall value, so they are marked with a red dollar sign. When it comes to nest type, the Bell's Vireo and Atlantic Puffin edge out the other birds because they each have a useful star nest. The King Rail, Chestnut Collared Longspur, Painted Bunting, and Greater Prairie Chicken can lay four or more eggs, which award them a beneficial tick, whereas the Condor, Owl, the Crane, and Puffin can only lay one egg, which earns them a red egg. Also, flexibility of food payment type and habitat placement is helpful. The rail, stork, and crane all accept at least one wild food type, and the condor and vireo can both be played in more than one habitat. Now, if we count up all the benefits and subtract the drawbacks, we can see that birds with the highest net benefit, according to my system, are the bell's vireo, wood stork, and atlantic puffin. They all come in with a value of 2 on my benefit scale. The bird with the most drawbacks and fewest benefits is Sprague's Pippet. The Pippet is the only card with a negative score. It's for this reason that I almost never play the Pippet. The Whooping Crane and King Rail do get an honorable mention from me, because despite returning a score of only 1, I think they are both pretty awesome cards. The King Rail is a monster for carrying eggs, and the Whooping Crane takes any three food, which is very handy when you have an uncooperative bird feeder. As you know, these bonus card birds represent real birds out in the wild. But birds with these powers are actually quite rare. I am a bird watcher, and I've seen 477 species in the United States, which feels like a lot, but I've actually never seen seven of these birds with these bonus card powers. And some of these bonus card birds I've seen only a handful of times. I think the game designer purposefully assigned rare North American birds the bonus card power. One reason many of these birds are rare is because the species or a subspecies is endangered or threatened. Legislative protection is a huge help to birds. The Endangered Species Act has helped increase the population of five of these threatened and endangered bird populations, according to a 2016 assessment put out by the American Bird Conservancy. Atwater's greater prairie chicken and the northern spotted owl, however, are still in population decline. There used to be one million of this subspecies of prairie chicken, but there are now only approximately 150 adults in two areas just outside of Houston, Texas. Competition from the invasive barred owl and wildfires have reduced the spotted owl subspecies to a population size of about 5,000 on federal land. We can still do a lot more to help rare birds in the wild. 
One of my favorite places to take legislative action is on the American Bird Conservancy's Take Action for Birds page. Here you can urge lawmakers to expand protection for threatened birds and stay up to date on creative ways to help. See the link below. Thanks everyone for watching my video. Please like and subscribe for more content. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitch where I'll be live streaming games. Have a good day. Bye.